Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 463 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today, Jenny and I are going to define a diabetes term that I made up. Don't tell the other episodes, but I quite like the Defining Diabetes series. What was once just in my head an idea of like, oh, I'll tell people the definitions of words so they know the tools they're using and what they're supposed to do. But I've come to see these episodes as more than that as time has passed. I think they're their own special little, I don't know. I just like them. It's like a mini pro tip series. Defining diabetes. They're just good. And they're helpful. Actually, they're made even better with the presence of Jenny Smith, my friend and certified diabetes educator who helps me on these and the pro tip episodes. Today, Jenny and I are going to define crush it and catch it. There's a little more to it, actually. There's crush it, catch it, and well, you'll find out in a second. But I just like crush it and catch it. The rest of it's like implied once you understand. You'll see in a second. Please remember while you're listening that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Please always consult a physician before making any changes to your health care plan. We're becoming bold with insulin. Hey, new listeners, did you know bold with insulin actually comes from the title of episode 11? I thought I would tell you that because now that the podcast is seven years old, it's possible you don't even know how this thing got started. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. It's the meter my daughter uses. It is the most accurate meter I've ever held in my hand, and it's absolutely lovely. Check it out at contournext.com forward slash juice box. You know what else? This show is sponsored today by the glucagon that my daughter carries, Gvoke Hypopen. Find out more at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. I have come to, uh, I, I've broken down the idea of how do I get a blood sugar back down into three simple words. I crush it, catch it and start over. Okay. So if okay. I see a, if I see a blood sugar that's high and it's stuck, instead of messing with it, I crush it, catch it and start over. Now, sometimes I crush it and it catches itself And those are days when I'm like, ooh, I really did it. Uh, And then there are some days when I crush it so hard it needs to be caught with some sort of fast-acting glucose. Um, This comes up a lot when I'm talking to people because I just feel like like staring at high blood sugars is a bad idea. Now, when I used to say this, people would say, oh, it's not good to bring your blood sugar down too quickly. And I know it isn't. But Mm -hmm. is it not a good idea when your blood sugar is high all the time to bring it down too quickly. But what about a person whose blood sugar is normally like 85 to 105 and it sits there most of the time, but then you get this big spike from something you messed up or did wrong or bad pump site or whatever. Um, Is there any value in watching it and bringing it down slowly over four hours versus crush it, catch it? There, well, and I'm glad you kind of brought it up because that was like the first thing on my mind to like spit out was I know you would. It, it 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 really does depend. I mean, somebody who's typically sitting in a nice, beautiful, you know, glucose range that they're happy with, and now oh, you know, grandma's apple pie came along, and I thought I'd only eat one piece, and now I've eaten three, and oh, I didn't pre bolus, and I, you know, all the things that go into right. a higher blood sugar that happens occasionally. The occasional high blood sugar that you do your little, you know, Mm -hmm. crush it, catch it kind of component. Is that detrimental? No. I mean, you're taking care of the high blood sugar. You're bringing it down. You're doing it quickly. I I would say that the, the opposite of that, though, you know, for a high blood sugar that's that's randomly high and you're kind of worried about doing that and bringing it down so quickly. Is there, is there trauma the same way on just leaving it hang high and come down slower by just taking a small amount and gradually getting it down? I think they're both honestly about the same in terms of any potential, like, you know, back end, which I don't see there at all. Right. Um, you know, problems. And you either 
take care of it on the back end or on the front end quick and it comes down and now you don't have to do it the high blood sugar anymore. Mm -hmm. Or you end up with a high blood sugar for hours watching it's like slowly come down. Yeah. You may not feel great during that lengthy time, but on the same, if you crush it early and it drops really fast, you also might feel the drop yeah. too. So, you know, in either of those, I don't think that it's necessarily bad. The long term of consistently doing that, like if you are the roller coaster and you're constantly crushing highs and on the back end catching them with a load of extra food, therein something needs some adjustment. Right. So. Well, and so that phrase would not come into my mind if Arden was constantly high. I would right. think, oh, there's so many other things that I don't understand. I, I am really talking about specifically when you just have this like out of nowhere, like, where, where did this come from? Because I think one of the problems with messing with it for hours is that that runs into another meal. And now you don't have any resolution of the carbs and the, the insulin, right? Like there's no, right. like I, I found myself years ago always saying to my wife, look, we need to get this down, get it level, get this insulin out of her so we can start over again. Because right. if not, you have all these other variables going on. You don't know which ones are impacting. And then you go into another meal. And it takes years to be able to just on the fly go, okay, there's still some active insulin, but the food's gone now. So I'll bolus this and I'll take away 10 carbs because I know there's some insulin left. Like you, Most people can't do that off the top of yeah. their head, right? So I, I, my, my theory has always been <clears throat> get it down as fast as you can because the insulin you use to get it down – is kind of gone after that. Like it gets, I don't know if this is a technical term, but it feels like it gets used up dealing with the carbs. Does that make sense? Givoke Hypopen has no visible needle and is the first pre-mixed auto-injector of glucagon for very low blood sugar in adults and kids with diabetes ages two and above. Not only is Givoke Hypopen simple to administer, but it's simple to learn more about. All you have to do is go to givokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. Givoke shouldn't be used in patients with insulinoma or pheochromocytoma. Visit givokeglucagon.com slash risk. Are you or your child carrying around an old busted up nasty blood glucose meter are you not even certain if it's accurate does that sound like the situation you find yourself in because if it does it would be very easy and possibly financially advantageous to check into the contour next one blood glucose meter this is the meter my daughter's been carrying now for a couple of years it is phenomenally accurate for us I'm talking about a good old-fashioned blood glucose meter that just works. It's got a bright light, so when you're using it at night, you can see what you're doing. The test strips allow for second chance testing, meaning you can hit that blood drop, not get quite enough, and go back in and get more without messing up the accuracy of the test or wasting a strip. And it's possible that you could be eligible for a free meter, and you could just find that out right now at contournext.com forward slash juice box. All right, so go check out that Givo Glucagon, the Contour Next One blood glucose meter. Even there's a link in that show notes there for Jenny. There's a lot going on there. You can find these links, like I said, in the show notes of the podcast player or at juiceboxpodcast.com. I don't know if this is a technical term, but it feels like it gets used up dealing with the carbs. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I usually say it gets eaten up faster. Yeah. It's like there's so much sugar for it there when you've got a high blood sugar that all that insulin gets sort of used up faster. There's It's kind of like the same concept of a pre-bolus mm -hmm. is you're getting the insulin action going now to hit what's coming right. and get it used up. And on the back end, if you've done it right and you figured it, you should have a smooth landing. Mm. It's always it always appears in my mind like a fist fight that just goes to the death that just like when it's over, both fighters just drop over backwards and on their way down, they're like, well done. And then they're they're just gone. They never get back up again, you know, and and you're right. That is how I talk about and, and how I think about 
pre-bolusing, which is to put both people's aggression at the same time, make the insulin working while the carbs are working so that one's not not doing its job without the other one because it's how you get a higher low blood sugar. But so in a bigger idea, I hear it's exactly right. Like, so what do you do in that situation? Like, how does Jenny handle uh, a high blood sugar that she gets? <laughs> Jenny doesn't like high blood sugars. <laughs> I like your, um, I like, well, one, you know, with using the system that I use for managing, I don't typically deal with that unless I have a pump site that's gone bad and it hasn't been dealt with, obviously. And for some reason, I haven't paid attention to any alerts and alarms that are going off on my CGM. So there are lots of catching points that obviously I have. And I know a lot of people use similarly, Mm -hmm. but with high blood sugars, I do the crush it, catch it kind of thing more than not. Um, I think there's a Because I don't want to sit high. I don't like sitting. And kind of like you, with my day the way that it goes, I don't want to have to wait out a high to eat. Because often my meals are with my kids. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't want to sit there while they're like chowing down and I'm like, mommy's got to sit here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Jen, Jenny's not saying she feels that her kids will feel odd if she's not eating. She's saying she doesn't want to watch somebody eat and not eat. No, <laughs> yeah. I want to be eating at the same time, right? That's the enjoyment of a meal together. Yeah. I think it's uh, abundantly clear why you and I get along about talking about diabetes so well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was like, and yes. now for the alternate viewpoint, here comes Jenny with exactly what I just said. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just I just think that I think it leads to so much more success because that staring at highs is stress inducing. And like people are like, well, I don't know. I'll make myself low. And I get that. Like if you're hearing this episode first, go back and listen to the pro tip series. Don't yeah. start with this. This is like ninja level. Like, I already understand what's going on a thousand times over, and I've got a high blood sugar. You know, if you... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, if you usually have high blood sugars all the time, your basil's wrong, you don't understand how to pre-bolus, like, all these other things are are first, not this. This is not step one. No, no. And I was also going to just sort of go back and say, you know, my my day-to-day, like, crush it (laughs) is definitely much more the case. Overnight, I mean... My husband will wake up to an alarm, Mm -hmm. um, but he is definitely much more the like sleep through a train coming through the wall than I am now being a mom and waking up to everything. So overnight I can say, because I am, I am my own manager. I don't have anybody catching or following or anything for me. So if there was a conservative time that I'm going to do less aggressive correction for a high, it's definitely going to be overnight. And it's usually, if I've had a high like that overnight, it's usually like the pump site is bad or it's gotten pulled out. And like, I've got this dangling pod off the side of my body and I haven't obviously gotten insulin. And then it leads to, well, how much insulin do I have left? So it's kind of a questionable and I'm a lot more conservative for my own self overnight because. Yeah, I would think that for an adult, it's different than for a caregiver for certain. And and I don't want to give anybody the impression that I use, you know, 50% more insulin than the situation right. needs. And then I just give her like a filet mignon dinner at the end. Like, although right. I could go into how you can get out of a high and go into a meal by correcting the high and pre bolusing the meal, even sometimes hours ahead of time, and then just introducing the food at the exact right time. At That's the not, right point. Maybe that does fit in here, but we're not talking about that right now. So I don't, I mean, I don't want anybody to think that I'm overdoing it. Over time, I've learned that, you know, I can be really aggressive here, and maybe I'm going to miss by eight carbs worth of insulin, right? Like just a little bit. And you can kind of, you know, add a little bit in. I, there's an episode called Utah Jen, where I talk about how I how I helped a person over the phone. <laughs> this is probably not something I should have recorded, but how I helped a person over the phone bring like a seven year old's blood sugar from 400 to 70 in like two hours, and it 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 involved crushing it and then introducing a meal at the right time. And that kid's blood sugar went like 76, I think, if I'm remembering. It just leveled right out. It was like the it was one of my 
my, my, my most happy moments in my life. <laughs> I walked around my house with my head, so I was like, I did it. <laughs> so, and then she ruined it by feeding him. But that's not the point. Anyway, it's a great episode, but not what I was talking about. All right, Jenny, um, I'm going to stop. I think like, there's reference to it, though. I mean, in yeah. terms of like that introduction of the meal at the right time, I think when you said this is like ninja level. Yeah. I agree, because over time you have an idea, you have a sense of how much to potentially crush it with. Mm-hmm. And where, with hindsight, you can tell where you're going to need to add something because it's, you're not going to, it's not going to catch it on its own. You're going to have to help with the catch. Yeah. And if somebody's listening to this and thinking, oh yeah, I try that all the time and I always mess it up. I really genuinely think go listen to the pro tip episodes because then you'll get through the little reasons why you mess that up. Cause I, you know, I could go, one of them is that people are constantly chasing blood sugars. They're always like on the wrong timeline. And I don't like know another way to put it other than to say uh, insulin you use now is for later, but a better way to think of it is that insulin from before is affecting you now. And if you're trying to affect before now, you're caught in a time travel movie and you're on the wrong end of it. So anyway, try the pro tip series. Okay, Jenny, thank you very, very much. Yeah, you're welcome. A huge thank you to one of today's sponsors, Gvoke Glucagon. Find out more about Gvoke Hypopen at gvokeglucagon.com forward slash juice box. You spell that G V O K E G L U C A G O N dot com forward slash juice box. Have you been thinking about that Contour Next One blood sugar meter? Have you been thinking about that Contour Next One blood glucose meter since I brought it up earlier? This is your time. Go check it out. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. You can find links in the show notes to... Hold on a second. I'm going to run out of music. You can find links in the show notes to today's sponsors, to Jenny Smith, and to all of the sponsors of the Juice Box podcast. Right there in your podcast player. There are show notes in your podcast. Podcast? Poshcast? There are show notes in your podcast player. You can click on them from there. And, you know, the links are there. Or, I don't want to get too technical when I say the links are there. Or you can find those links at juiceboxpodcast.com. Allow me to take this moment to thank you for listening to the Juice Box Podcast, for sharing the show with other people. And for making last month, March of 2021, the most popular, the most downloaded month ever in the history of the podcast. I'm not giving away the numbers, but last month did by a multiplier better than the first year of the show. Is that not crazy? Anyway, I have you to thank. So um, thank you. I appreciate it. Again, when you share the show, when you subscribe in a podcast player, when you tell somebody about it. When you leave a review and you're like, oh my God, I love this podcast as a review. And then you give like a really thoughtful reason why those reviews are very helpful. Um, Mostly for listening. That's the best thing you can do for the show. Listen and tell someone about it. I really appreciate this. I feel like I've gone on too long about this now, but there's no going back and I don't feel like editing it out. So I'll see you soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. I'm just going to keep talking. You can leave if you want to. But some people don't know about the other episodes that I think would be really helpful to them. So I'm going to take a moment. Juiceboxpodcast.com is the website for the show. Everything you need is there. There's menus at the top. And you'll be able to find the Diabetes Pro Tip episodes and the Defining Diabetes episodes under one link. It's a link that says Diabetes Pro Tip. If you can't remember that, you can just go to diabetesprotip.com, where I've also put those episodes. I know a lot of you find the show and people tell you, oh, if you listen to this podcast, like your variability will get better and your A1C will go down. You'll just have a better idea what you're doing. And everybody's like, well, how do you do that? I think it's by listening to the show. I think that listening gives you a firm understanding through conversations with Many people who are parents of children with type 1 diabetes or adults who have lived with diabetes for a long time, just hearing the conversations, hearing ideas come up, things get spoken about, I find very helpful. I find it builds your kind of diabetes knowledge. 
But if you really just want to dig into management ideas, you are looking for the defining diabetes episodes, just like this one, and the diabetes pro tip episodes. So again, diabetespro-tip.com. They're also right there in your podcast player, the thing you're holding right now with your phone. The uh, pro tips begin at episode 210. They do not run concurrently, so you have to find them. And I think, I say I think, but I'm looking, so it seems disingenuous. I was buying time. Uh, The defining diabetes episodes begin at episode 236. There are many of them, actually. Uh, Probably a number in the dozens, and I don't see any end to them. As we define, you know, I don't even see them as, like, definitions. I started talking about this at the beginning. Like, it's not just, like, bolus means this. It's Jenny and I, we define it, but then we talk it through. And now you know what that tool is. It would be like, um, it would, I mean, it'd be like if you came from another planet and someone handed you a hammer and a pair of pliers and a screwdriver and uh, told you to go put together a bed. You might not know what the hammer's for. You wouldn't even know what it was called. So if you were helping me and I said, pass me the hammer, you wouldn't know. So I like for you to know what a bolus is, what basal is, why hydration is important. What's an insulin deficit? Is feet on the floor a thing? What is a fat and protein rise, a compression low, a rage bolus? Like I want you to, I want you just to instinctively know this is a hammer. I know what a hammer does. And that way, when you need the hammer, you won't hesitate. To me, that's what the defining diabetes series is about. And then while there is no doubt that I would love for you to listen straight through this podcast, start at first one and listen all the way through. I know not all of you are going to do that. If you did, you would glean everything that is inside of the pro tip episodes. Don't skip the pro tip episodes. Just listen to them straight through. Episode 210, diabetes pro tip, newly diagnosed or starting over. And they go on from there. If you're not an MDI, still listen to the MDI episode, right? If you're on MDI, still listen to the pre-bolus episode. If you're on MDI, listen to the insulin pumping episode. If you've never had a CGM in your life, still listen to the Mastering a CGM episode. Don't miss bumping and nudging, the variables, exercise. Like, Don't just skip one because you think, oh, this isn't for me. Those are going to lay down a firm foundation around your diabetes management, in my opinion. And they're free, so why the hell not, right? Okay, thanks so much. Now I'll really see you next time. Bye-bye. Hit subscribe.